In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you all. Welcome to those people who are watching through YouTube. We hope that today's Mass gives you some comfort, that you're not forgotten or abandoned by the Church or by God. People have commented about how beautiful the little altar of repose is, and why not? It's lovely. Look at it and admire the wonder of God's creation, flowers, the candles, Jesus, the light of the world. We'll call to mind our sins and we'll ask for God's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Be Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all of our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. As we recall year by year the mysteries by which, through the restoration of our original dignity and innocence, human nature has received the hope of rising again. And we earnestly ask your mercy, Lord, that what we celebrate in faith we may possess in unending love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please take a seat for the readings. In the readings today, we hear how the Pharisees are angry, the Sadducees, sorry, the Sadducees don't believe in the resurrection. They're a rich, aristocratic section in Jewish society. There's no angels, spirit, no resurrection. They're intelligent and they favour, above all, the, the Greek culture over and above the Jewish culture. They're angry today because People have said, Jesus is risen from the dead. We've seen him. We put our fingers into the holes made by the nails. Pharisees are angry. They're jealous. They don't believe. Let's listen. The first reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The high priest intervened with all his supporters from the party of the Sadducees. Prompted by jealousy, they arrested the apostles and had them put in the common guild. But at night, the angel of the Lord opened the prison gates and said as he led them out, Go and stand in the temple and tell the people all about this new life. They did as they were told. They went into the temple at dawn and began to preach. When the high priest arrived, he and his supporters convened the Sanhedrin, this was the full senate of Israel, and sent to the Geol for them to be brought. But when the officials arrived at the prison, they found they were not inside, so they went back and reported. We found the Geol securely locked and the, warden and the warders on duty at the gates, but when we unlocked the door, we found no one inside. When the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard this news, they wondered what this could mean. Then a man arrived with fresh news. At this very moment, he said, the men you imprisoned are in the temple. They are standing there preaching to the people. The captain went with his men and fetched them. They were afraid to use force in case the people stoned them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise always on my lips. In the Lord my soul shall make its boast, the humble shall hear and be glad. This, this poor man called, and the Lord heard him. 
Glorify the Lord with me. Together let us praise his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me. From all my terrors he set me free. This, this poor man, man called and the Lord heard him. him. Look towards him and be radiant. Let your faces not be abashed. This poor man called, the Lord heard him and rescued him from all his distress. This, this poor man, man called and the Lord, Lord heard him. him. The angel of the Lord is encamped around those who revere him to rescue them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. He is happy who seeks refuge in him. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. <coughs> Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son. Everyone who believes in him has eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost, but may have eternal life. For God sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. No one who believes in him will be condemned, but whoever refuses to believe is condemned already, because he has refused to believe in the name of God's only Son. And on these grounds is sentence pronounced, that though the light has come into the world, men have shown that they prefer darkness to the light, because their deeds were evil. And indeed, everybody who does wrong hates the light and avoids it, for fear his actions should be exposed. But the man who lives by the truth comes out into the light, so that it may be plainly seen that what he does is done in God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please take a seat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's interesting that the sepulchre can't hold the body of Jesus. It bursts forth against the weight of a mighty stone. It's interesting that the prison can't contain the believers, the apostles, they burst forth because the good news can't be held back. And it's interesting that even when they're told to don't preach, that nothing can impede the work of the good news. He is risen, nothing will prevent them from preaching the truth. So today let's just think a little, there are three occasions when the priest, there are three occasions during the Mass which involve a kiss. First one, the priest kisses the altar. The second kiss, the priest kisses the gospel, you've seen it. The third one is the holy kiss, where we offer each other the sign of peace. Why not? Because God takes human flesh in the person of Jesus. We are a bodily religion, and Christ comes to us in physical, Bread, wine, oil, a healing touch. How better to express Christian love than with a kiss? And when the priest kisses the altar of St. Francis Church, embedded in the altar will be a relic. Sometimes a little fragment of bone from the saint. Sometimes a piece of cloth worn by the saint. That's called a second-class relic, sometimes a piece of cloth which has touched a garment that St. Francis has worn. So the priest kisses the altar, you'll see it at the start of every Mass, to honour Christ and to honour the saint, St. Francis, whose life was utterly Christ-like. 
And there's an episode in the life of St. Francis that demonstrates that as relevant for our lives today. You know this, that during the Crusades, when Christian soldiers and knights marched to the Holy Land to liberate the Christian holy sites in Jerusalem from the Saracens, St. Francis joined them. In the Fifth Crusade, he joined hoping and praying that he would be martyred. And to cut a very long story short, in Egypt, when the two armies, the Christian army and the Saracens, faced each other with the typical madness, you know, holy people are mad, nothing will hold them back, with the typical madness of a holy man, St. Francis just walked straight into the camp of the Muslim Sultan al Kamil. He was a nephew of Saladin. But al Kamil was actually a pious man. He was a pious Muslim. He read the Quran. He preferred a life of prayer to a life lived by the sword. And so St. Francis was martyred. In fact, he was invited to be a guest of El Kamil for one week. And we have, if only we had a transcript of that conversation, what a treasure to have. What did they talk about? There was no secretary to take minutes. We're not terribly certain, but we know for certain that St. Francis was offered the freedom of the city of Jerusalem. He wasn't martyred by the sword, but he developed an eye disease, a, a trachoma, which caused great suffering and later the stigmata, the wounds of Jesus on his hands and on his feet. So his prayer for martyrdom was in a sense answered, but it was a long, painful martyrdom, existed every day for many years, and it was born without any complaint. And they reckon the meeting between al Kamil and St. Francis was the first time that a conversation between a Christian and a Muslim had taken place on matters of theology and spirituality. Dialogue today is more important than ever. It drives away ignorance, it drives away prejudice. The world is shrinking, it's just a, a global village. And let Muslims and Buddhists and unbelievers taste and see the love of Christ, taste and see, as the psalm says today, that the Lord is good. And we know that waves of migrants seeking maybe a, a, a freedom from persecution, many have seen and tasted the love of the Catholic faith for the first time. They'd never seen and tasted before a God of forgiveness, a good shepherd who knows us by name and not by number. And I find that talking to Muslims, Imams, I've spoken to Imams, I've spoken to people of the metaphysical faiths, Muslims and Buddhists, it doesn't diminish my Catholic faith by one single iota. The very opposite, it becomes stronger when I see the readiness of Christ, and I preach that in a sense, please God, with my life, the readiness of Christ to clothe us with his mercy, to feed my soul with the sacraments. Let's ask God for that gift to have a heart big enough to embrace the whole world, a world of suffering, a world desperate for love and for peace. In the bidding prayers today, we ask God to bless a young lady in the congregation. She's still at school. She's got musical gifts. They also are offered to the congregation. She set up the Royal Medical Benevolent Fund, really for doctors who perhaps are impoverished, health workers who don't have a steady income, people on the front line who don't have life's necessities to continue. 
we ask God to bless her enthusiasm. May it never die. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we ask God to bless those good people, missionaries, who take the love of Christ to people perhaps who live lives of great superstition and fear and perhaps ignorance and false beliefs. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Remember being in Africa, Sierra Leone, meeting people who had been educated by the Catholic missionaries. And they told me that some of the missionaries, their educational skills were so, so, so good that today, a generation, two generations later, they are remembered. Father O'Brien, Father McGinty, taught them everything that they knew and how they've succeeded in this life. And they thank God for that. We take the gospel of peace. Throughout the world, people are changed and lives become enriched. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And for those people who've suffered the, the pangs of the coronavirus, people who are orphaned, people who are widowed, families perhaps without a breadwinner. We ask God healing and we ask God's comfort in these difficult times. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And Lord, wash away all my iniquities, cleanse me from all of my sins. I pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. In a, a little application of jail, following the protocol. The Lord be with you. And your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, a mighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death. And by rising, he restored our life. And so overcome with Easter happiness, every land, every people rejoices in your praise. Even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unended hymn of your glory as we acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in the same way when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once for giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. And let us proclaim together the mystery of our faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, as you celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give me thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And tell me, we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. I remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with you, our Bishop, and all the clergy, Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them, Lord, welcome the victims of the coronavirus into the light of your face. <clears throat> and have mercy as all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I will stand and pray with confidence to the Father, using the words which Jesus, who is our Saviour, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Gracious Lord, grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all anxiety. As you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always Amen. and with your spirit. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, I eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring me condemnation, but health in mind and in body. This is the Lamb of God, who takes away all the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And now we offer the sacrament of Holy Communion, the body of Christ. I would think of those people watching, perhaps, who long for the time when once again they can consume the bread of life and the wine of joy. And perhaps a little prayer for them is opposite. Oh God, I cannot receive you today sacramentally, but I invite you spiritually into my heart. And I long for the day when I can receive you again in the sacraments. And I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart of having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. The communion antiphon. <clears throat> I have chosen you from the world, says the Lord, and have appointed you to go and to bear fruit, fruit that will last. Alleluia. I would thank God in a moment of precious silence for his many gifts. And for exposition of the Blessed Sacrament, we'll sing the lovely hymn, Latin hymn, O Salutaris Hostia, O Saving Victim.
Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. And people who wish to pray perhaps during the day can follow silence quietly, the same sight and to see the blessed sacrament exposed to enable us to pray with devotion. And may the peace and blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit come down upon me, your unworthy servant, and upon the people gathered here watching. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's go forth in peace to love God and to serve each other. Amen. Amen. God bless.